let's get warmed up. So we're going to use Ninja Alley today. So we're going to show you a few movements. We're going to work down on the floor predominantly. We're not going to get too much on the hanging stuff to start off with. We're going to do a little bit of that. So it's just going to be some like basic ground flow type movements just to get you warmed up. So we'll start off with a bit of a crawl and we'll, we'll put two movements together. So you'll crawl, let's go, let's mark these out and we'll start somewhere here. We'll do one movement to the ladders and you can switch and then you can go second movement to the end of that first set of ladders. So we're gonna work just like halfway down. So our first one, I'll just demonstrate this way for you guys, is gonna be a Spider-Man crawl. So you're gonna start in your push-up position, we're gonna bring knee high. So we're gonna try and get this like adductor, um, hip flexor kind of work going. From there, you're just gonna slide forward, just keep your bum down and come back into, into your press-up position. Switch sides, come back into your push-up position. All right, your next one is gonna be an inchworm. So we're gonna walk the hands forward, get a bit of core going, walk the toes in. Walk the hands forward, as far as you want to go, let's make sure that we're not losing back arch. All right, let's give them a go. It wouldn't be playtime if we didn't do a wheelbarrow race. <laughs> All right, so the reality of this is actually reflexive shoulder stability starting to do a little bit of warm-up stuff, get the core involved as well. So we'll do a little bit of a relay. So if you send one pair to that end, we're going to go, one team is going to go down, swap over, and then the other team is going to go back. All right, and then we're going to change. So everyone's going to do a barrow and everyone's going to do the wheeling. Well, it's a race, but however, what I don't want to see is people getting pile drived into the ground <laughs> by an over-enthusiastic over wheelbarrower. All right. Two options for the carrier. We can go hands or change the lever and go make it easier for me to hold you're gonna get closer well. than that are you hey <laughs> yeah. i know it's, it's sunday morning you can do that one, one. <laughs> so i need another coffee before we do that i think if i hold him here he's got a lot more tension he needs to create yeah some further down his leg don't, what we don't want to see is that so strong through the shoulders midsection on we should see bum on and boom the shoulders don't collapse and he's going to try to wiggle the least amount <laughs> side to side as well. All right, we ready? So this team is going to start. No pile drivers. Three, two, one, go! Yeah, this is your puppet. Nice, guys. Yeah, good job. Good job. So we should feel um, reasonably warm by now as well. We've done plenty of stuff on your hands a little bit as well. So we're going to do a couple, we're going to give you a couple of things to play with each. I'm going to take you through um, some elbow lever uh, stuff and then Tim's going to show you some forearm stand and then we're going to be able to have a play at both of them or just one of them, pick one that, that feels or looks good. And then we've got a little challenge after each. Yes, after and, each yeah, set. and then a little challenge to have a go. So um, first one, elbow lever. A bit like in the back lever when we're talking about distributing weight forward to counterbalance our legs going backwards and the pivot point being in the middle. So it's a classic seesaw um, type lever. I'll just show you what we're talking about. So I'm going to create a ledge for my stomach to rest on. My elbows are going to go either side of my belly button. I'll break it down for you again. But the idea that if I want to straighten my legs back, they're, not going to, they're only going to stay on the floor unless I shift my body forward and try and flatten that back out and straighten the arms slightly to be able to then hold that position. If I'm not forward, my feet are always going to stay down and I'm going to be going like this. The other thing I don't want to do is elbows being slid out to the side. So our job is to be able to create some, just do this with me, create some external rotation. So elbow out in front at 90, hand should be able to get outside of wrist. If we're tight at the shoulder, yeah, if you're tight at the shoulder, you're not, it's going to be very difficult for us to create that shape. That makes sense? When I create that shape, those are then going to go either side of my belly button. If I can't create that external rotation, I can't go this way, and the elbows kick out to the side, then I'm always going to be fighting. The elbows are going to be slipping by the side of me. So that is, that is a reason for us to work on. Like if you can't create that external rotation, it means your shoulders are pretty jacked up. That's not necessarily a good thing. You might go, well, I don't want to, I'm not bothered about learning an elbow lever, Jacko. I say, yeah, but we should be bothered about whether our shoulders have got good healthy movement yeah so that might have just some of you might have just gone cranky what is that about i've got no chance of getting out there 
Yeah, and I always think I'm I am I am like the opposite of Mr. I'm not Mr. Flexible. Years of getting battered at rugby. If you if you look at me doing something and think Jacko looks flexible compared to me, that's not a good thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so our starting point, a bit like our frog stand, our starting point would be rather than knees on elbows, I'm going to be creating that shape and uh, fingers pointed backwards and out, trying to just get used to. Can I lean forward and get my elbow, balance my stomach on my elbows and just keep everything in as close as possible. But then gradually, as I can push forward and straighten my arm, I've then got the opportunity to allow some counterbalance with the legs. Like straddling first, but we must get used to this. Forward and back. Forward. So I must get used to opening that up and flattening the back out. Can we, did we see that like rather than the back being rounded like in Skin the Cat? I'm trying to straighten it out. So you're trying to lift your chest and open your arm up. Jacko, just showing that prep for that pseudo planche push up just gets that force production into the floor. So just to warm yourself up for this one, because you have to push quite hard. This is just a nice little exercise, just do like a movement patterning. What have I got to do? This is your force production here, so turn the hands around. I always don't need to touch, but Jacko is just going to go through his push-up. It's that elbow press position or the push position there, which is going to help you to generate the force that you need to go and find that balance. It's just tell your brain how I'm going to create that stability and that shape. And the further you take yourself forward, the harder it is to get back out of that. So you can make it harder by going forward, easier by coming a little bit further back. So some of those press-ups to start with and then just to get, get, like Tim says, feel the movement pattern of where you're trying to push and extend at the elbow. If you're not strong enough in the shoulders and through the, the bicep to hold you forward in that position, your brain's not going to let you go there. So you're only going to be able to extend forward and counterbalance your legs as much as strength you've got to go forward. But you can start to feel this position. Some people can nail this when they've never tried it before within literally five minutes or even less. Yeah. Let's have a go. Let's have a go. See yeah. what it feels like. Any questions on elbow levers? We'll play around a bit later on. Okay, forearm stand. So this is a nice little bridge of something to play around with when you're still working on your handstand. It helps with getting us comfortable upside down, but what it does is gives us an opportunity to practice when we've got a bigger base of support. It's actually, once you understand the movement pattern and where you've got to create the stability, it's a lot easier than what you're going to, it's going to feel, if you've not done one before, quite challenging. Because it's all of a sudden, it's a quite a different shape to find the balance. But once you get used to it, it's a fairly easy position. So I'll show you here, because you can then practice against the wall and you can do it with a partner. But we're going to go palms down on the floor, elbows on the floor for our big base of support. And then I'm going to try and create this like little kick position, like, like the kick up handstand, but I'm just going to use this sensor of balance here to distribute my weight of, of uh, my sensor of mass over. So as I come through from here, I'm going to set forwards and I'm just going to practice that kick. Just progressively feel there'll be a stage as you come through where you're going to just finally get weightless and then you can bring it through. Okay, so I can go low to the ground, I can push up and get tight, keep the tummy tight and hold that shape. With the, um, with the, the, the way most people kind of find this challenging is they end up going, kicking up and then panicking and kicking back. So you've almost got to allow yourself to commit and it's easier here. That's the most stable shape. What you don't want to be doing until you've got the strength is pushing your hips back behind you. Um, keep pushing the floor down through your hands. You do arch your back a little bit, so it's important to remember that you're going to keep that midsection nice and tight. If you want to, you can practice up against the wall. Yeah, start with the wall, just like with the handstand. Um, <coughs> and then that same thing we were talking about before, about centre of mass, about base of support, just because of where the shoulder is, he's got to create some shape with the back to be able to balance out. Um, but does it make sense that you've got all of that as surface area to balance on? We've shortened the length, the lever length of the arm, so everything's been brought down, so the balance is way easier, but it really does give you a nice chance to feel like, for your handstands, what the whole trunk and leg balance needs to be like, that's a bit different to a headstand. The headstand's that real nice, um, stable triangle, whereas we actually now haven't got the head on the floor, but we're making the balance a little bit easier. It's like a, a step on from a, a headstand, but not quite as far as a handstand. It's also a really important bridging part if you ever wanted to do a tiger bend push-up. 
So handstand push up onto forearms and then back out. This is just a crucial part of that bottom bit. So if, if I'm doing my tiger bend push up work, I'll start in that position and rock forwards and then go for the push up on the way back out. But so it's, it's play, but it also then forms part of another movement down the line if you wanted to do it. Have a go. So some little challenges to have a play around with. This one um, is the flying frog stand, where we're going to try and go from a press-up position and land ourselves in our frog stand. So everyone, we've done a press-up, we've done a frog stand, can we link the two together? One thing for it would be, just to start with, doing the reverse is a little bit easier. So going from your frog stand and just kicking back a little bit until eventually you can get yourself in your, to your full press-up position and then build it back up the other way. So you might start with like a little jump and then you try and do a bigger jump. Then you try and go from your full frog stand. It's not, it's funny what you get clapped for, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> How do you get clapped for? <laughs> but your forearm sounds <laughs> far <laughs> harder, it's much better. Right, right, have yeah. a go, have a play. Right, have it's a crap. Right, um, <laughs> let Graham give you the coaching point. You want to go? Yeah, go, go on, Graham. Yeah, you go for it. Go and take a shot. <laughs> Look at him, in his elements. Right <laughs> round. Your arm comes under your ribs, and once you tip toe, then when you're ready, put your legs up. So let's just just go get just go through those again. So you wrap wrap the arm around, get your armpit super tight into that. Yeah, so snug it right in. But that then arm grabs and it's pushing down like like you're shoveling. The other arm becomes your elbow lever. So he's making a the elbow is bent. He's making a ledge to rest his stomach on, just like we did on the elbow lever. It's going to be just to the side of your belly button. Yeah, that is then hand pointing down. And they're both shoveling like pushing down together. And he's got to, at the moment, chest is pointing down, but he's got to rotate to get his chest this way so he can get a little bit more side on. And again, like anything, we'd go knees bent first. So tuck, we'd go tuck, that's going to be easier first. Then one leg, and so on and so forth. Yeah? Thank you.